Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and Ireland have just completely outplayed England finishing 32 points to 80 despite going to down to eventually 13 men with England scoring a consolation try right at the end through Johnny May who actually got a double um, but Ireland really really did just compete to outplay England pretty much all facets you know the scrum was probably their biggest weapon so lots of big scrum and penalties. Um, but an interesting game where if you look at the stat, it was pretty even. But, you know, you just, having watched the game, just the small, the vital clashes were all won by Ireland. And they, after weathering the storm in the sort of first five minutes, you know, really, really grew into the game. Um, before we look at the tie game, look down at some stats and stuff like that. Please do subscribe to the channel. Smash like on the video as well. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the game. Right. So it started off with a penalty um, in the ninth minute by um, Owen Farrell. That was the first sort of points on the board. And England, both sides were pretty up for it. It was a little bit of a messy start. Um, and then England really started to grow into it. And, they, and you know, they, they managed to kick. Um, it, was, it was a brilliant turnover by Itoje. They won a penalty. They kicked towards um, the corner. They won another penalty further in field, which is a really good kick kickable position. And um, then Owen Farrell obliged and kicked the penalty. Literally about 10 minutes later, oh, um, Johnny Sexton then replied with his own penalty. And after that, it be all became one-way traffic. The English defense was completely outdone by the brilliance of Jack Conan and Keith Earls for the first try in what was the 22nd minute. A fantastic, a ball over the top of the lineout. Um, Jack Conan running back, almost sort of over the top, grabs it, inside ball. Keith Earls hits it a pace, dissects the English defense in two, and he then rounds Johnny May to go into the corner. A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant try. And then literally off the kickoff, um, Johnny Sexton went high, um, and Tad Byrne ran around on the other side, um, caused the more which then created a scrum, and I won a scrum penalty, and they kicked the, the penalty over. So that was just, you know, that kind of just showed, that was a sort of a turning of the tide, where suddenly Ireland just looked like a better side. They were winning the small battles, you know. England had their opportunity, but just didn't quite look clinical enough. Discipline was a major issue. They kept conceding penalties at poor times. And um, they then traded a couple of penalties. Owen Farrell got one in the 27th minute, then Johnny Sexton again, and then um, Jack Conan went over in the 36th minute. And that kind of was, was the, sort of the first nail in the coffin for England. Um, what was a brilliant up and under by Johnny Sexton, um, phenomenally chased by Hugo Keenan. I mean, it really was brilliant. Um, who, who won the ball back. They went off to the blind side. A good carry by Johnny Sexton, who created a bit of space, took a few defenders up, and Jack Cohen um, caught uh, Luke Cowan Dickey just um, a bit sort of napping at the at the at the pillar, and he dived dove over straight from the ruck. Um, and then um, Johnny Sexton added the extras. So you know, Ireland went to the break well in control. And in the second half, you know, it, it was pretty much one-way traffic again, you know. I mean, England d didn't really help that England then go um, down to to having to actually deploy Dan Robson as a fly half because um, Owen Farrell went off and um, so did George Ford. And so as a result, you know, England were, you know, player-wise, not looking particularly good. And just, again, every time they sort of tried to get into the game, they looked like they were doing something, you know, Ireland just responded. And there was a red card in the 63rd minute to um, Bundy Aki. And in the letter of the law, it is a red card. You know, he went in shoulder. I mean, he technique-wise was fine, but was too high. And there was direct shoulder contact to the head of um, Billy Benapola. And um, Bundy Aki was, was sent to the bin. And literally a minute later, Ben Youngs went over. They kicked to the corner after, um, after that, um, created a more. And then um, Jamie George and Ben Young combined down the blind side to go over. And suddenly it was like, you know, a lifeline for England. Can they come back? But after that, just a few minutes later, Ireland won a big penalty, um, kicked over, and then they won a huge scrum penalty. I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, the, the dominance they had all of a sudden, um, and then and, and kicked over another penalty. They just they just kept extending their lead, you know. And, you know, if you look, you look at the stats, and the stats tell a little bit of a different story because, you know, it was 52% possession, 48 possession, which is quite even. 49-51 territory. Time and possession, 60 minutes for Ireland. Uh, 11 minutes for England. Time in opposition, 22. Listen to this stat. 1 minute, 20 seconds for Ireland. 3 minutes, 16 seconds. England had almost three times as much time um, in the opposition, 22. And yet Ireland scored all the points because, you know, they didn't they didn't necessarily camp out in the England in the 22 at, at all. Their tries were well made and they just took the opportunities for the penalties. And um, time, time in opposition, half was 7 minutes each. And um, see, points to visit to 22 was 5 for Ireland, 2 for England. But if you go look at the tackles made, 
You know, um, Ireland attempted 125 tackles. England attempted 134. Ireland missed 13. England missed 11. A 90 and 92 percent tackle success rate. 14 dominant tackles by England. So in the loose play, they were decent. They were good. But the set play, the set pieces, especially the scrum, was where Ireland really, really sort of just ground England down. Um, you know, 100 percent success rate um, for the scrums for Ireland, where only 60 percent um, some scrum success rate for for England. They conceded three scrum penalties. That was where Ireland um, really did um, set, find the dominance. Because, I mean, line-out-wise, I think it was 10 line-outs won by Ireland, 17 by England, zero um, stolen. So, line-out-wise, it was very, very even. But it was at scrum time where Ireland really did have the upper hand. And some just brilliant individual performances. Johnny Sexton managed the game brilliantly. Um, I thought the loose chair was very good. And Robbie Henshaw walked away as man of the match. He had some fantastic contributions. He made a really good um, read when England looked very dangerous of attack, which resulted in the penalty. He then... Um, also won another penalty right in front of the poles where he chased down the kick and, and made the perfect timing tackle on Elliot Day just outside the 22-meter um, and, and won the penalty there. He was absolutely everywhere. Um, if you could try and pull up his, his individual stats, I just thought, I mean, yeah, I mean, you couldn't really fault um, what he did. He played 79 minutes, played right towards the end. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry, the stats aren't really showing up here. But he was just brilliant, you know. Whenever he, he didn't, I don't think he missed too many tackles, if any tackles. But he made some really, really vital con um, contributions. But there were lots of players who could have stood up and and taken the the, the honors. Johnny Sexton was very good. Um, Tad Furlong was good. Tad Byrne was very good. Um, CJ Stunder was probably a little bit understated. He had a couple of good carries. Josh Van der was good. Um, Josh, Jack Collin I thought was particularly good. And that was probably quite reassuring, given the fact that and that was CJ Stunder's last test for Ireland. So probably very reassuring that in his last test. Playing at um, flank, Jack Conan stepped up and produced a really good performance at number eight. For England, I thought, you know, there, there were players that weren't bad. I thought something like Mario Toja stepped up. Um, ben Young wasn't too bad, but they just they just looked off the pace. They just couldn't get into it. I mean, tactically, Ireland just completely outplayed England. And discipline was the issue, again, for, for England. And not necessarily conceding too many penalties, but just conceding stupid penalties at the wrong times in bad positions. That was the problem. When they conceded those penalties... They were often in kickable positions, which is why Ireland just kept that scoreboard um, ticking. And, you know, from 26 to 32, 18, you know, it's literally both halves, they had the upper hand. And to be fair, the scoreline does slightly factor England because they did score right at the end and Elliot Daly did convert. If, it, if that hadn't gone over, it would have been, um, well, they hadn't scored that try, it would have been 32-11, which probably would have been a bit fairer. And, you know, they scored the try defending against a 13-man a Ireland squad, um, team and there was completely on the overlap. So... You know, if the cars don't necessarily happen, it might not change. But, I mean, credit to Ireland, because they literally went down to 40 men and then yet still managed to find six points in the game. So, completely deserved winners. A overall probably disappointing, um, you know, six nations. They'll finish on 15 points. England are going to finish on 10. So, far, far more um, better than England. So, I mean, from the defending champions to finishing fifth, it's not been a good campaign for England at all. And I think, you know, I think Eddie Jones... So he's going to be under a lot of pressure, um, especially with the selections he made, you know, because I think a lot of people have been saying, you know, how can he keep backing all the services players who haven't played enough rugby, should be giving other players a chance. So people like Elliot Daly coming under um, a lot of pressure. So, yeah, I mean, not a good time for England, and they'll they'll need to try and sort this out for, for the um, end of year internationals. What it does mean for me is that the British and Irish Lions selections have got to be quite, are going to be quite interesting, I think. I mean, Scotland are sitting on 11 points. They can still get potentially a win against France, depends how well they play. But for me, you look at that England squad, and there are a lot of players who are not performing to their, to their best of their ability. And some of the other teams, in Wales, Ireland, Scotland, you know, there are a lot of players who are becoming difficult to ignore. So when it comes to the British and Irish Lions selections, how much is form, how much is reputation, you know, what does Warwick Gatlin go with? So I think that will make it very, very interesting. But yeah, full time here, Ireland completely outplayed England. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. My name is Steven and I will chat to you very soon.